Hello again. The after effects of the Black Lives Matter business, which exploded after the death of George Floyd, is having an increasingly baleful effect upon education. Teachers are falling over themselves in their anxiety to, to display their anti-racist credentials and to somehow squeeze black people into the curricula which they are teaching. This is often done in history lessons with claims that there was a black Roman emperor or that black Africans sailed across the Atlantic to America before Columbus, that sort of thing. This is bad enough, but mathematics has now become infected with the same desire to promote fake history. And this is damaging to those children who actually wish to learn mathematics. The object of the exercise is, of course, to make mathematics more relevant to black pupils and to stop them feeling bad about the fact that all the stuff that they learn in their maths lessons was discovered by white Europeans. The thesis being advanced is that Africans were actually skilled mathematicians centuries or even thousands of years before Europeans began doing mathematics, and that Australian Aborigines were carrying out complex calculations long before the arrival of Captain Cook. There is, I need hardly to say, not a single piece of evidence for all this. A couple of baboon bones have been found in the Congo which are covered with scratches and date back 20,000 years or so. I give um, in the thumbnail to this video a photograph of one such bone dating back 20,000 years. But beyond that, there is nothing in either Africa or Australia. The problem is, you see, that these were pre-literate societies, they had no written language, and so there is no evidence before the coming of white Europeans that anybody was even able to carry out the simplest calculations, such as multiplying or dividing. Nevertheless, time is now being wasted in classrooms, getting children to study such things as Australian counting techniques which entailed counting on their fingers and toes. Of course, this might not be too useful in a modern industrialised society. If I saw somebody working out the amount of change he should receive in the local supermarket by taking off his shoes and socks and counting on his toes, I might perhaps raise my eyebrows. In the description to this video, I give a link to a learned paper published by Sydney University. It is written by an Aborigine knowledge keeper and it explains how the Aboriginal inhabitants of Australia counted. The author, a grown woman who says that she still counts on her fingers, tries to persuade us that Aborigines were able to count to nine before white people arrived, which I'm quite prepared to believe. Whether they understood concepts such as square roots or calculating the value of pi is, however, open to question. The idea that there can be different sorts of mathematics according to culture is in itself absurd. The idea being put forward is that rather than relying upon the mathematics devised by slave owners and colonialists, we should look at the kind of maths dreamed up by other cultures. This is mad. Mathematics is not something invented at all. It is a discovery of the fundamental nature of the universe and the laws which govern it, and then finding a way to make these clear and comprehensible. Take, for example, the inverse square law for electromagnetic radiation which says that measured light intensity is inversely proportional to the distance squared from the source of radiation. In other words, if you double the distance from a light source, you do not get half as much light, but a quarter as much. This is not something invented by Europeans. It is how the universe happens to work. It is a discovery, not an invention. Most mathematics is like that. 
I am quite prepared to believe that Australian Aborigines or African Bantu might have been counting to 20 a couple of thousand years ago. I am not prepared to believe though that they discovered the inverse square law as it applies to the radiation of light. The terrible thing is that all the wonders of our civilization, from electricity to space rockets and computers, have been made to work by the application of mathematics. That is to say, the rules of nature which have been discovered and catalogued. This has not been done by any other culture than that of white Europeans. True, mathematics was first being written down in ancient Babylon and Egypt, and work on the subject was certainly carried out in India and China. But it was in Europe that all this was put to work so that we could have a highly developed technological society. To pretend that any of this could have been achieved without the work of European mathematicians is quite absurd. As for the idea that any of those scratched baboon bones, like the Ashango bone of which I spoke the other day, indicate an ancient African knowledge of advanced mathematics, the idea is completely nuts. Just to give some idea of what is being taught to kids at some schools in Britain and America, I attach a link to a blog about African mathematics. The information here has been used as a basis for lessons in ethnomathematics at at least one British school of which I'm aware. This is about the famous baboon bone, and we are told that it was the cradle of mathematics. I am not too sure what a cradle is, unless it is how illiterate people spell cradle. Here is what is said about those 20,000 year old bones with scratches on them. All said, it is amazing to realise that there were mathematicians 20,000 years ago on the African continent. It is so great to realise that my ancestors on the shores of Lake Edward were actually brilliant scientists playing with prime numbers. Whether it is a woman calculating her menstrual cycle or some brilliant tribe astronomer, <clears throat> it feels so good to know that the paleo-mathematicians of Ishango already knew prime numbers. They were a great civilization long before the pharaohs of Egypt. Thus, in reality, the Ashango bone is the oldest table of prime numbers in the world. <clears throat> All this kind of thing is coming soon to a school near you. And the time spent on this nonsense will mean less time spent actually learning mathematics.